Hey guys, it's been a little while. Last time I uploaded, I was at the end of a tier 7 1 billion silver campaign. So I reached a billion silver, and then I said, now it's time to spend some silver. So I spent the next uh, month or so just inting away all of my silver. Now I have 300 mil left, and it's time to do another tier 7 silver campaign. So the goal is to make another billion by playing tier 7 builds, and this time I'm going to try to upload at least every week to show my progression towards that goal. And also this time we're going to play different builds. Last time I was just spamming daggers all day every day, and toward the end that got really grindy and really boring. So we're going to play some different builds, and we're going to start out with a carving sword build. So this is what our build is going to look like, and I'll take a second to explain it. So this is a carving sword build, and it's a cheap budget build. Um, typically, you want to play carving sword with a Ms. Walker jacket and a Finkau or a Helmet of Valor, right? Uh, but um, we're trying to play this at tier 7, so we're going for the budget tier. So we're trying to avoid the big expensive artifacts such as the Ms. Walker and the uh, Helmet of Valor. The carving sword is a pretty expensive weapon, even at tier 7. That's not really avoidable though, because you know, that's that's our build. Um, but the assassin jacket can replace the Ms. Walker jacket, and the Dust Weaver helmet can replace the uh, helmet of Valor or the Finkel. Because generally speaking, what you do with the uh, Ms. Walker jacket is you use it to time out people's big cooldowns or to dodge important skills, right? So they turn on Merc jacket, they turn on Inferno shield, they turn on Wanderlust, you turn on Ms. Walker jacket and you time it out. Right, and um, well, that's if they're using Wanderlust aggressively, you just turn on his water jacket and time it out. And then with the uh, purge helmet, most of the times you just want to purge boots, right? So, um, when we run Dust Weaver helmet, Dust Weaver helmet basically counters boots, right? If you t if you tether to someone with the uh, uh, with a helmet, and then you wait until it's just about to expire, then you reactivate to dash in, right? So you can you can cancel out pretty much the uh, the whole boost duration with with a good usage of Dust Weaver helmet. And Dust Weaver helmet, as far as countering boots goes, it's actually much much stronger than uh, Finkel and Helmet Valor, because the range on Dust Weaver is uh, 17 meters, right? It's much longer, and also it's a much short, shorter cooldown. It's 20 second cooldown. Right, so it's a very good ability for chasing people down. And um, as far as uh, the jacket piece goes, um, Miss Walker jacket, you know, we, we said that we basically just use it to dodge cooldowns such as, uh, you know, stalker jacket, merc jacket, that kind of things. Um, with assassin jacket, you can kind of do the same thing. It's not quite as good, right, because it doesn't give you a vulnerability, so it's not quite as good at, at dodging things like uh, Cursey or stalker jacket. Uh, but it's good enough for dodging a lot of other things like uh, uh, Inferno Shield or Merc Jacket, right, so it's still good. And uh, if you need to, of course, you can also just uh, switch your Assassin Jacket to Inferno Shield, right? And that's going to be better for uh, certain matchups like uh, Stalker Jacket matchups or um, uh, Bad and Bow matchups. Another upside to running Dust Weaver and Assassin Jacket is that these abilities are much better when it comes to escaping. So we are running pretty low tier, right? Tier 7 is not very high tier. So we're going to be running away from high tiers a lot. And Assassin Jacket lets you, you know, juke them out. Dust Weaver Helmet, it can jump to a mob and help you escape, right? So these are uh, better choices when it comes to uh, survivability. Alright, so right now you're looking at clips from my last stream when I actually played this build. And uh, I had, uh, I think I played this build for roughly about 5 hours. And uh, during the process, I made about 22 mil and I lost 4 sets, like I died 4 times. So each death costs about 500 to 570k, depending on consumables. Uh, so in the end, we probably made something like a 400% profit or something like that, which is pretty good for a tier 7 build. I think my average for a profit per set when I was doing the tier 7 dagger sets was uh, a bit over 2 mil, so somewhere around like 2.5 mil per set or something like that. Uh, not sure if I remember that right, but uh, right now we're definitely crushing that average with this build. 
Um, I did get asked a lot when I was playing. I did get asked a lot whether if I think like this build is more efficient than the other one when it comes to just like playing tier seven, playing low tiers. And uh, I will say that carving sword in general is much easier to play than uh, one hand dagger, and it's uh, much less painful <laughs> when it comes to like having to deal with counters and stuff. Um, it's probably uh, I would say it's definitely more efficient than a uh, dagger if you're picking on mostly even IP fights. Um, but dagger do have a greater potential at uh, out IP fights. Uh, but at the same time, dagger also has a lot more counters than uh, uh, than carving swords, right? So even if you are uh, out IPing the other guy, if they're playing a frost or a double blade and they actually know how to use their weapon, it's going to be pretty hard for you to win as a dagger. With a carving sword, you don't nearly have as much counters. Um, and also, it's much easier for you to press an advantage. Because with a dagger, there's a very big fall off between uh, like your damage falls off really hard between your E's. So sometimes you get a good trade off on someone, uh, not quite enough for you to just auto attack them to death, right? So in be then you have to like back off and wait for E. And in between your cooldowns, they get their cooldowns back or they just like try to uh, manage to escape, right? Then things get kind of hard. Um, but with Carving Sword, as long as you're not like completely outgeared, most of the times, if you manage to press, uh, if you manage to get advantage, you can press the advantage much more easily because you don't have as sharp of a damage fall off. Also, in contrast to the dagger, the carving sword is a much better weapon for kiting. So, with a dagger, basically you have to be able to auto attack people with your eon in order to do damage, whereas with the carving sword, you could just stick to hitting your range Ws, and if they uh, burn mobility to like catch up to you, then you can just uh, E away from them, and when you're Eing away, make sure you actually hit them with the E on your way out, right? so you can do some damage to them as well. And that way you can keep your distance from them while kind of building a uh, HP lead, and also burning their cooldowns in the process. So that's how you win against uh, builds that will either out brawl you or uh, people that just out, out IP you, right? So you just want to hit Ws and Es and keep your distance, and then when you have a lead, you can go all in. Now the way we judge whether we can go in or not is just like playing with the one hand dagger. Uh, so the most ideal situation obviously is uh, if you have your cooldowns and they don't, and you have a health lead and they don't, right? So. In this fight, I'm fighting against a 6-3 uh, Bloodletter meta build, and he outgears me by quite a bit, but he doesn't really know how to play the build, right? So uh, first time, first encounter, he already failed, and then here's the second encounter. Second encounter, he switched to Q1, and you know, with Q1, Bloodletters can actually just outbrawl a Carving Sword face-to-face. -face. Uh, so we don't, we don't want to do that, and uh, we just want to walk off their cooldowns. Right, so Cold Scout and Assassin, and uh, Soccer jacket were both used already, so we try to go in a little bit there with the infernal shield, but he disengaged, so we we wanna we wanna keep distance now, and he's gonna all in us. He's looking to all in here soon, so we don't have jacket up, uh, but we do have W and E, so we can use those to keep distance if he runs at us, and there we go. So that cancels out pretty much his entire boost duration. Now I don't want him to just run away, so I'm gonna boot in. Um, and there he used his uh, cultus kind of too early there. But I mean, I guess he had to because he didn't want me to hit him. Um, but because he used it on me while my boots were still up, I can just walk away so he doesn't get any free hits on me. And then when my um, jacket comes up, I can just sit there and brawl with him. And now he's seeing cape. Um, he does outgear me quite a bit, so the execute couldn't kill him through that dead cape. But we do have uh, our boots back, so we can run him down and uh, kill him with a spider helmet. <clears throat> I have another clip here, which uh, we showed at the beginning when I was introducing the build, but this one's against the even more geared uh, Blood Ladder meta build, right? So this is Soccer Jacket with uh, How, right? So the more common way to play uh, Blood Ladder, probably the better way to play Blood Ladder than uh, with the Cold Scout. 
And uh, the way you do this is the same, right? It's the idea is the same. They come in with uh, Infernal Shield. Oh, sorry, they come in with Stalker Jacket. We just back off with EW. We try to keep our health bar up and poke them down as much as we can until we can't run anymore. Then we turn around and brawl with them with uh, Infernal Shield. Now, I actually do misplay here a bit by eating away with this, uh, with my Infernal Shield still up. I should have just kept brawling with him. I would have won the trade. And if I had kept brawling, I would still have my. Uh, e up to chase him with then maybe I would be able to like actually finish him off but because he's you know 300 IP above me and with the uh, awakened weapon I was playing a little scared because I don't play as much carving sword as I play daggers so didn't know my limits there but uh, now we know and next time we'll get them but this just goes to the show though that with this build as long as you're playing around their cooldowns right as long as you're trying to kite and keep your health bar up you can win some pretty big IP gapped fights, right? Like if you're just playing properly like this, and if, of course, they're not playing properly. <laughs> as far as matchups go, the ones that I try to avoid are spears, prowling staffs, and uh, light crossbows. Now, light crossbows, they just out damage you, and it's hard for you to, let's say, build up a HP lead and push in or anything like that because their build setup is made for fighting at low health, right? Cleric Row, Guardian Helmet, and Marlock Cape. They're just really good at, you know, baiting those low HP fights. Uh, in fact, one of the ways that uh, light crossbows get kills consistently is by getting low health on purpose to bait people in and then using their survival skills to, uh, uh, to stay alive when they're at like two bars of health and then just like, exploding you with their burst. So light crossbows I generally try to avoid. Spears are considered a matchups to source in general because of cripple. Cripples can like they can get a lot of value off of cripple if they just keep crippling your Q stacks. Right? So it's kind of hard to play against them. And then prowlings, well prowlings also just out damage you, kind of like light crossbows, right? They just out damage you. And uh, it's hard to out-rotate them too because, you know, their abilities just have no cooldowns. Um, so it's not impossible to kite out a spear or a uh, prowling, right? But it's not easy. And especially if they have some kind of gear, even even just a little bit of a gear advantage over you, uh, I would just try to avoid those kind of matchups. Now, I... Like I said, I don't play a whole lot of carving swords, so if you are like a carving main and you have some kind of consistent way to uh, fight those builds, let me know in the comments. I'm definitely open to learning. But other than that, I think pretty much any build in the mist, any build that you see often in the mist, should be just a fair game for carving swords. Uh, there are some builds that people probably have trouble with when they're starting out things that just straight up outbrawl you like uh, Q1 death givers, uh, battle axes, Q1 fire staffs, right? And with those builds, if you just take the kiting approach, right? Hit W, walk away, hit W, walk away until you have a health lead. And uh, if they all annoy you, just E away and uh, hit them on the way out. Right? So if you just take that kind of approach, you should be able to beat all of those builds, at least all the ones that I can think of uh, with a carving sword. And that's why carving has been a meta weapon for such a long time, right? It's because it doesn't really have uh, a whole lot of uh, hard counters. And um, the builds that do kind of counter you, you should be able to just avoid. The ones with like hyper mobility, like uh, double blades and stuff, you actually kind of counter those builds, right? Because you just outbrought them and uh, you can kite their cooldowns fairly easily. And then when you can't kite them anymore, you turn around with Inferno Shield and brawl with them and you win. Okay, so as far as tips and tricks go, that's uh, pretty much it. I will keep the uh, video going because I recorded a lot of fun interactions uh, and I just want to share the clips. So I'll keep playing the, uh, the clips with the original audios on and I'm just going to stop talking. I uh, hope you guys liked the video, if you did, please uh, actually click the like button, subscribe to all that, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Across. Over. Oh, I thought
think he's actually out. Yeah, he's actually out. We can only one him still. Oh, he changed. We can still 1v1 him on that, we just have to kite a lot. I don't want to actually go in there because uh, no assassin can. Fucking mob stunned me. God, what is this? Fire. Eh, <laughs> so lame. Oh shit. Not like this, not by the nature boy. Man, I play the fuck out of that death giver too. I don't get to kill him though. It is what it is. Oh no, not again. No, not like this. Okay, he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Oh god! Oh god! <laughs> what is happening? I do get the Death Giver after all! Bye! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, it's too funny. Might still be fighting behind me. I have yellow arc. That's too bad. What's that? How are you alive with loot? <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> That's assassin jacket too good. I see mist. Dude, this fucking fire is always ratting me. Let's kill this fucking fire too. Jacket. Fuck you. 
Keep riding me, man. One point four mil. And then there's also the battle axe. That's a juicer too. Nine hundred K. Two point three mil. Easy money, man. Oh the trust us. System says W0N23 oh has rated God. the channel with 646 viewers. Huge raid. Finally, some viewers worth acknowledging. Welcome, W0N23 <gasps> and viewers who appreciate quality content. <laughs> no! 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 Love it, Dave! <laughs> Yo, thanks for the right one. I was overloaded after looting. I didn't have a bag on. <laughs> uh. yeah, 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 I just need to get a reset. <laughs> I got this, I got this. Oh, no, nice Inferno shield. Oh, come back. Yeah, where are you going now, huh? Maybe I do this instead? I don't know if I'll be able to chase anything. Oh, okay. I'll go take this instead. Yikes. No, there's another one in front of me. I'm dead. No, not me! Not me! Go kill him, please! I get to live? I get to live? No, I don't get to live. The blood letter's still on me. Ooh! Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 Too good for you. Ha 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 <laughs> That's huge. There's no way that hit me. What the hell, man? Oh man. Oh, come on, mobs. Trolling me.
Hmm. All right, that should bring me up to a mil. Oh, 490k. 1.2 mil. Oh man, I just fat finger. That's all. Chill. <clears throat> I seriously waited his entire cape duration for that. Bro, what? That's horse shit. Easy. How did I not hit him? Whose idea was it above a assassin jacket, man? Oh, God, dude. Undead cave. Oh, yeah, that's why, I mean, like, that's why I can't eat him. Dude, he OC that he's already 100 IV above me.
That sounds dumb. Hi, Leafy. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go tell him. <laughs> I told him, guys. I told him. Ah, uh, man. Uh, here he comes again. Oh my god, I'm not enough to kill. <sighs> you dumbass. I didn't even have to use my charges. I didn't even, like, what did I take my OC out for, man? Go back in there. <laughs> 